praise God. Praise the Lord. Deuteronomy 6, 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, not two, not three, not 50, one. There's one throne that sits above the earth and there's one being that sits upon that throne, Yah. So I wanna welcome you today to Face Reality Presents the Real Biblical Earth. I'm gonna break down the creation story in detail, word for word, line for line, in three different versions of the Bible. So we have the St. Joseph edition, New American Bible. We're gonna be using the New King James Version Bible. And we're gonna be using William Tyndale 1526 Bible. Feel free to get yours out if you want. All right. So I need to stress this first. The creation story is unambiguously written. That word means in a manner that is not open to more than one interpretation. I want to quote Proverbs 18, 13. All right. He who answers a matter before he hears it, it is a folly and shame to him. That's New King James Version. The Tyndale Version says, He that giveth sentence in a matter before he hears is a fool and worthy to be confounded. So basically, he who answers a matter before he hears it, it is a folly and shame to him. So folly means lack of good sense or foolish. Foolish means stupid. Shame to him. Shame means a painful feeling of humiliation, which also means embarrassed. Okay? So confounded means to express anger, to embarrass, cast down, destroy, or overthrow. So in layman's terms would be, listen to my understanding of scripture before you rudely interrupt or you're worthy to be yelled at and destroyed. <laughs> Basically, just follow along, listen to what I gotta say, and at the very end of the video, come to a conclusion. All right, let's get started. So what was the Old Testament originally written in? Hebrew, according to Encyclopedia Britannica, the Jewish Bible, the Old Testament, was originally written almost entirely in Hebrew, with a few short elements in Aramaic. Hebrew. And the New Testament was originally written in Greek, but mainly today we're gonna to focus on the Old Testament scripture, the creation story, but we will pull some verses from the New Testament as well for reference. So we're gonna start with the New American Bible, the St. Joseph edition, and read the worldview of the Hebrews. All right, so let me blow this up. Graphic representation of the Hebrew conception of the world. God's heavenly seat rests above the superior waters. Below these waters lies the firmament, or sky, which resembles an overturned bowl and is supported by columns through the opening floodgates in its vault. The superior waters fall down upon the earth in the form of rain or snow. The earth is a platform resting on columns surrounded by waters, the seas. Underneath the columns lie the inferior waters in the depths of the earth, Sheol, or hell, home of the dead, also called the netherworld. This was the same pre-scientific concept of the universe as that held by the Hebrew pagan neighbors. All right, so the key word we want to focus on is platform. What is a platform? Here's the definition of platform. A raised level surface on which people or things can stand. A raised level surface on which people or things can stand. The floor's level, 
and I'm standing upright, perpendicular to the ground, okay? This is the earth, a platform. So what are some platform synonyms? Stand, stage, floor. A stand, a rack, base, piece of furniture for holding, supporting, displaying something. Stage, a raised platform, floor platform, typically in a theater on which actors, entertainers, or speakers perform. Floor, the lower surface of a room on which one may walk. Synonyms of floor, the ground, the solid surface of the earth. All these things, all these words mean something level, stable, firm, flat, on which something we may walk on. Real simple, okay? Now, this image is showing a sphere S and a platform P. The sphere, the round ball, is not the platform. That's the object resting on the platform, P. P is the level surface on which the sphere may rest on. The Hebrew said the earth was the platform. As you can see, the platform is something level. So the world can't be S, the sphere. The world has to be P, the platform. This is real simple. And that's what it's meant to be, real simple. All right, so now we're gonna to go to Genesis chapter one, verse one, the history of creation. Genesis 1 verse 1. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, period. So immediately, obviously, God created the heavens and the earth. It was God doing something. There was a creator. What were we taught in school about how we came into existence? Now, I'm going to use the word mainstream science to make it easy, but there's really no mainstream science. Mainstream is pseudoscience, but I'm going to use mainstream science just to make it simple. How was the Earth formed? According to NASA Solar System Exploration, when the solar system settled into its current layout about 4.5 billion years ago, Earth formed when gravity pulled swirling gas and dust in to become the third planet from the sun. Yeah, I'm not seeing any credit given to God. I'm not seeing anything about heavens and the earth. I'm just seeing stuff about gravity, 4.5 billion years ago, third planet from the sun. Hmm, see? This is what we're taught in school. What came first, the sun or the earth? According to Discover Magazine, the sun, at 4.6 billion years old, predates all the other bodies in our solar system. Hmm, well that's weird. Because Genesis verse 1 verse 1 says, Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The sun wasn't until day 4, which we'll find out shortly. So some people think heaven and outer space mean the same thing. But I'm going to show you how they do not even remotely close mean the same thing. All right, so the definition of heaven, a dwelling place or perfect happiness for the soul after death. Outer space definition is the physical universe beyond the Earth's atmosphere. Outer space synonyms. Here's a summary from thesaurus.com. Synonyms for outer space, cosmos, celestial spaces, cosmic space, deep space, empty space, ether space, infinite space, infinity, and more. Cosmos, celestial spaces, cosmic space, deep space, empty space, ether space. Heaven synonyms. Here's a summary from thesaurus.com. Promised land, Abraham's bosom, Canaan, city of God, Goshen, kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, land of the Leal, New Jerusalem, and more. Sky, bliss, 
paradise, above glory. So as you can see, heaven and outer space mean completely different things. They're not to be intertwined. So Genesis 1 verse 1 says God created the heavens and the earth. Heaven is God's realm. That's not outer space. And if outer space does exist, then where does it fall into Genesis 1 verse 1? It doesn't. All right. All right. Now, let's go to Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. The earth was a formless wasteland and darkness covered the abyss while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Now, that's the New American Bible. Now, the New King James Version Bible says something very, very interesting. Verse 2, the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. So we're going to go into detail and break down what the word face means. What is a face in solid geometry? According to Wikipedia, in solid geometry, a face is a flat surface that forms part of the boundary of a solid object. A flat surface. So if a face in solid geometry means a flat surface, that means God was hovering over the flatness of the waters. Okay. Does a sphere have any faces? According to CK12 Foundation, a sphere has no faces, a cone has one circular face, and a cylinder has two circular faces. A sphere has no faces. A cone has one circular face, a cylinder has two faces. Are there any flat surfaces on a sphere? According to Baijus, the sphere is a geometrical three-dimensional solid having a curved surface. Like other solids, such as cube, cuboid, cone, and cylinder, a sphere does not have any flat surface or a vertex or an edge. So basically, a sphere does not have any flat surfaces. Face has to be flat. A circle has a face. According to study.com, as a two-dimensional object, yes, a circle has a face. The area inside the circle, as 3D sphere, however, does not have any flat surfaces and therefore does not have any faces. See, a circle can have a face because a circle is a two-dimensional object and the horizontal part of it would be the face. A sphere cannot have any faces, no flat surfaces, okay? Let that sink in, all right? So we'll get back to circle versus round versus sphere later on. But now, let's go to Genesis 1, verse 3 through 5, where it talks about light. All right, so Genesis chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. Thus evening came and the morning followed the first day. Now, very important. God called the light day, not the sun. Now, this is where I get to how light exists without the sun. All right. Think about it. We have daylight. Daylight means the natural light of the day. We have sunlight, which means light from the sun. And then we also have moonlight, light of the moon. Now, earlier I said how the sun was made on the fourth day. But God said, let there be light on day one. Fourth day of creation. According to Welcome Collection, the fourth day of creation, God creates the sun, moon, and stars. So clearly, that has to mean there's two different forms of light. Now, let's go to Genesis 1, 
14 through 19. Then God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from night. And let there be for signs and seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so. And then God made two great lights. I'll read that again. And then God made two great lights lights the greater to rule the day that implies the sun the lesser light to rule the night that implies the moon he made the stars also now here's a good key part to focus on God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth so God set them inside of something and he calls that something the firmament and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide and to divide the light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the fourth day. This is the day where God made the sun and the moon. The fourth day. But on day one, he said, let there be light. Now. What does mainstream say about light and the sun and the moon as light sources? Does the sun light up the moon? According to Lunar and Planetary Institute, in the same way that the sun illuminates Earth, the moon reflects the sun's light, making it appear bright in our sky. You see, this mainstream science is going directly against scripture. Now, I really want you to think about this. If God made two great lights, light sources are not dry land. They're just lights, like the sun is a light. Nobody ever tries to go to land on the sun because we know it's just a light source. There's nothing firm about it. There's no land. So if God made two great lights, one being the sun, one being the moon, how could we have landed on the moon in 1969? Think about that. Basically, scripture debunks the moon as being anything to land on. And we'll see that in a little bit when he calls dry land earth. Dry land is earth only the earth while above us are light sources with no ground no floor no platform to land on all right but now we are going to go to genesis 1 verse 6 through 8 then god said let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters thus god made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. God called the firmament heaven. So the evening and the morning were the second day. Firmament. What does that mean? Firmament Latin definition. According to vocabulary.com, the word firmament comes from the Latin firmus, or firm, and this description of the sky as something solid reflects ancient ideas of the way the universe was constructed. All right, so the firmament is something firm. The ancients called it something solid, okay? Something solid. The sky is something solid. God placed the sun and moon and stars inside of this solid thing. In the word firmament is firm. What does firm mean? having a solid, almost unyielding surface or structure. Some synonyms of the word firm would be hard, solid, unyielding, resistant, solidify. Okay, now that we know that firmament means something solid and firm, let's reread Genesis 1, verse six through eight. With that in mind, 
Then God said, let there be a ferment in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the ferment and divided the waters which are under the ferment from the waters which are above the ferment. It was so. Okay, so something solid was required to divide water. And he called the ferment heaven. So right there is at least two heavens. Number one, God's realm where he resides is heaven number one. And the ferment itself is heaven number two. And then the sky is heaven number three. The three levels of heaven. The sky, the firmament, and God's realm. Three heavens. Now let's reread one more time Genesis 1, verse 6 to 8, and then verse 14 through 19. But this time we're going to read it from the St. Joseph edition New American Bible. Let's see what it says in here. Then God said, let there be a firm. No. Then God said, let there be a dome. <laughs> One more time. Then God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. Right there. We know what domes are, right? <laughs> this verse alone is an epic destruction of that little thingamajig right here. Final time. Then God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. The sky, heaven. Evening came and the morning followed the second day. Now let's jump down to verse 14 through 19. Then God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days and the years. And here we go. And serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. Then God made two great lights, the greater one to govern the day. The sun governs light. So right here, govern means to exercise authority over or rule, to steer, govern, to steer, drive, pilot, direct, manage, conduct, guide, control, govern. So the sun governs the light. It's not the only light source that God said, let there be on day one. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and night, to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and the morning followed in the fourth day. Follow the fourth day. Okay. Dome meaning. Here's the definition of dome. A rounded vault forming the roof of a building or structure, typically with a circular base. So a dome is a rounded vault forming the roof of a building or structure, typically with a circular base. Dome Latin meaning. House. According to Wikipedia, the English word dome ultimately derives from the ancient Greek and Latin domus, house, which, up through the Renaissance, labeled a revered house, such as a domus dei, or house of God, regardless of the shape of its roof. House. God made a house for us. God made earth. And in a house, there's a roof. There's a ceiling. Synonyms of dome would be vault. So, vault meaning... Here's the definition of vault, a roof in the form of an arch or a series of arches, typical of churches and other large formal buildings. All right, so there's something solid above the earth and within that is the sun and the moon and the stars that are luminaries, okay, luminaries. 
Let's briefly go to the book of Enoch. The book of the heavenly luminaries. Okay. Here you can see how Enoch says the sun and the moon are identical size. Now the beginning of this, it talks about the six portals the sun and moon go through. Six portals in the west, six in the east. They orbit above the earth, which is stationary. Sun and the moon are orbiting over the stationary platform placed on columns or pillars. stars are within the dome okay so let's go to Genesis 1 verses 9 and 10 we're going to talk about the earth that God made all right so follow me to Genesis 1 9 and 10 then God said let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that the dry land may appear and so it happened the water under the sky was gathered into its basin and the dry land appeared. Verse 10. God called the dry land the earth. And the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. So God called the dry land earth. Pretty self-explanatory. But here's the thing that most of us don't realize the only place in this realm with dry land is earth that means there can't be other planets out here somewhere with dry land as well that you could potentially fly to and walk on for a few reasons there's a dome above us that prevents us from leaving it which means there's no outer space and the only place with dry land is Earth. It's really self-explanatory. It's the only place with terra firma is Earth. Okay? God doesn't make mistakes. Dry land is Earth. All right, so now let's go to when God completed his work. So he made the heavens and the earth in six days. Six days out of a seven-day week. All right. So Genesis chapter two, verses one through four is the seventh day. Thus, the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished on the seventh day. God ended his work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day, sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work, which he had created and made. This is the history of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord made the earth and the heavens. Very specific. There's just heaven and earth in the universe. So now we're going to compare other verses in the Bible to the creation story. Follow me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1. New King James Version. For we know that if our earthly house this tent is destroyed we have a building from God a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens all right Tyndale we know surely if our earthly mansion 
a house with a ceiling and a roof, wherein we now dwell, we're destroyed, that we have a building ordained of God. Earthly house. It's right there. This place is a house with a roof protecting us. It's just that simple, all right? Now follow me to Isaiah 40, 22. He sits and enthroned above the vault of the earth. That's the New American Bible. The vault, the arched roof, the ceiling. King James Version. It is he who sits above the circle of the earth. Circle is a two-dimensional flat plane. It's just a circle. And God's up here, and we're down here on this circular platform. All right. Its inhabitants are like grasshoppers. That's us. Who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. I hope this is coming to light for you. This place called Earth is a humongous house, mansion, tent-like construction. Now, most tents have a square base, and we'll see how there's four corners of the Earth, and there's a circle within those four corners, okay? He sits above the circle of the Earth, not that the Earth is only a circle, but that's where he's at. But based off tents and vaults, the base could be a square where there would be four corners of the earth. It resembles a sea of glass, according to Revelations 4, 6. Let's go there. In front of the throne was something that resembled a sea of glass-like crystal. That will be the firmament, okay? Now let's go to Job 37, 18. This is the New American Bible. Do you spread out with him the firmament of the skies, hard as a brazen mirror? See, this is reiterating how he separated the waters from the waters with something solid. Here's the New King James Version. With him, have you spread out the skies strong as a cast metal mirror? Above us is an impenetrable dome barrier Vault, tent, sea of glass, roof, ceiling. There's no way to escape it unless God lets us escape it. There's no outer space. I don't know how else to say that. There's no outer infinite vacuum of space.
Everything is within this dome. Sun and moon and stars that we can see is close enough for us to see. If we can see it with our naked eye, with our human eyes, then it's close, it's local. Close in comparison to these light years that we're told in school exist. That's complete, utter, preposterous absurdity. Ezekiel 10, 1. And I looked, and there in the ferment that was above the head of the cherubim, there appeared something like a sapphire stone, having the appearance of the likeness of a throne. So that's God's throne that is above the circle of the world, and it appears to be sapphire-like. Okay, now we're going to go to Job chapter 26, verses 10. All right. He drew a circular horizon on the face of the waters at the boundary of light and darkness. Horizon definition. Here's the definition of horizon. The line at which the Earth's surface and the sky appear to meet. Horizon or horizontal? According to Math Open Reference, in geometry, a horizontal line is one which runs from left to right across the page. It comes from the word horizon. 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 In the sense that horizontal lines are parallel to the horizon. In the sense that horizontal lines are parallel to the horizon. Okay, so horizontal lines are parallel to the horizon parallel to the platform of the earth round definition here's the definition of round shaped like or approximately like a circle or cylinder okay so a circle is round like a dinner plate or a clock on the wall a sphere is also round okay but check this out is a round circle flat according to ucl well, first things first, a circle is a two-dimensional shape, so a circle is definitely flat. Hmm. Exactly. So, a circle is two-dimensional shape, so a circle is definitely flat, but not spheres. Circle definition. Here's the definition of circle. A round plane figure whose boundary, the circumference, consists of points equidistant from a fixed point, the center. A round plane figure a round plane all right plane meaning here's the definition of plane a flat surface on which a straight line joining any two points on it would wholly lie boom a flat surface so for the last time job 26 10 when god drew a circular horizon on the face of the waters He's drawing something over a flat, round plane. All right. Proverbs 8, 27. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he marked out the vault over the face of the deep. When he made firm the skies above. When he fixed fast the foundations of the earth. Psalms 104, 5. You fix the earth on his foundation. Never to be moved. Right there debunks any alleged earth turn. There's no wiggle room for never to be moved. There's no kind of sorta. Never to be moved. Psalms 104.5, Tyndale, thou hast laid the earth upon her foundation, that it never move if at any time. There's no debating this if you are a believer of God and his word. There's nothing you can say to say, well, it kind of moves, but we, no, no, no. Never moves at any time. And if it doesn't move, then this solar system wouldn't work. It wouldn't function. This couldn't happen. Earth just can't be still while everything else is moving and orbiting. This is fake. 
This is fake. This is real. God's word trumps mainstream science. Every day. Every week, every month, every year for eternity. God's word is true and it correlates with our daily experiences. We don't feel nothing moving and we never have and never will. This is Face Reality. I've been sent by the Creator, the Most High, to expose all lies and deception. The end of the globe is imminent. It's going to happen. The Earth is flat, stationary, e-mobile, with a dome over top. The truth is the truth. Now. Let's get back to more biblical truth. All right, let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 8. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the beggar from the ash heap to set them among princes and make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he has set the world upon them. The world of the Hebrews, the columns that the platform of the earth is resting on. These are the pillars. It's not a parable because the earth is still in its own foundations and it's resting on pillars. Now let's go to Job 26, 7. He stretches out the north over empty space and suspends the earth over nothing at all. All right. Now, if there's any Bible verse that the globe believers would try to use to try to justify a spinning ball, earth, this would be the one. Unfortunately, the Bible has hundreds of verses that unequivocally support flat, non-rotating earth. So, Job 26, 7 is basically saying that God suspends the earth and its pillars within the inferior waters of the abyss, the primordial waters from the beginning. There was water. Okay. Water is life. So here's the New American Bible. First Chronicles 16, 30. Tremble before him, all the earth. He has made the world firm, not to be moved. Psalms 96, 10. Tremble before God, all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. The world will surely stand fast, never to be moved. See the word never and cannot doesn't mean kind of, sort of. And it definitely doesn't mean thousand miles an hour or whatever. Psalms 93, 1. The world will surely stand in place, never to be moved. This is God's reiterating what he did in Genesis in the creation story. This is self-explanatory, all right? Isaiah 14, 7. The whole earth rests peacefully. That doesn't mean this. <laughs> There's nothing peaceful about this. <laughs> this is peaceful. 
Psalms 119, 89 through 90. Through all generations, your truth endures. Fixed to stand firm like the earth. One more time. Fixed to stand firm like the earth. Not this. Not this. Psalms 33, 8 through 9. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all who dwell in the world show reverence. For he spoke and it came to be commanded and is stood in place. God commanded the earth when he made it and he commanded it to be still. All these verses mean the earth does not move. not my opinion this is God's word second Samuel 11 11 Tyndale now everything God just said well it doesn't say flat earth anywhere in the Bible but it does 1526 the first English printed translation William Tyndale 2nd Samuel 1111 and here I said unto David the ark in Israel and Judah dwell in pavilions and my Lord Joab and the servants of my Lord lie in tents upon The flat earth. There you go. Flat earth. In the Bible. Mentioned. Now, yes, we don't see it in many other translations, if ever. It's be open fields, whatever, but it says it. I don't care if it says it once, it says flat earth. But here's what you won't see. You'll never see sphere, spherical earth or globe earth. You'll never see the word globe earth in any scripture. Not once, but you'll see at least once where it says flat earth right here, right there, right there. This is a flat world we live in, enclosed flat earth with God above us. All right, so based off Holy Scripture and all the earth related verses, we just comprehensively broke down. I conclude, the earth is a circular flat plane platform within a square, enclosed by a solid vault of heaven above that contains the sun, moon, stars, and clouds, all the air we breathe. All the ocean waters are flat and level, contained within the circle of the earth. The earth is supported by columns of pillars that are suspended within the inferior primordial waters in the great abyss. God, our creator, sits enthroned in heaven above the heavenly firmament at the center, directly above the circle of the earth. We look up to pray. God looks down upon us to answer prayers. There's one up and there's one down. There's no other galaxies, no other life forms, no aliens, no orbiting planets with any inhabitable terra firma, AKA dry land. There is no globe. There's no gravity. There's no outer space. All that nonsense is simply Satan's greatest deception. Hosea 4, 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. I'm trying to bring knowledge to life. All this we just did was just giving knowledge, okay? Once again, Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. All right? Hashtag, earth is flat. Hashtag, face reality. Genesis 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's it. That's simple. 
Amen. This is Face Reality with a final warning message to all Earthlings. The question being, how many people should you share this video with? Calculated. According to my recent analysis of how many humans exist, there are approximately 8 billion living souls on this earthly plane. That's how many people you should share this video with the entire world. The Earth is flat. Face Reality, signing out.